We're back with Rick Ellis, and now I want to talk to you about your work on Broadway. Uh, a novel had been published by Disney called Peter and the Star Catchers by the wonderfully funny Dave Barry and the wonderfully complex Ridley Pearson. It's an origin story, I guess, or a reboot of Peter Pan. Uh, it's 500 pages long. It's very rangy and unwieldy in the way the picaresque novels are. The directors asked me, just as a friend of theirs, to write some stuff for the actors to say because the first workshop they just worked off of the novel, but the novel wasn't, they wanted to do a play that for adults and it, uh, it would, the characters would be played by adults mm -hmm. and the audience would be an adult audience. And uh, so there was nothing that was really appropriate in the novel, so they asked me to do it and I wrote some stuff and they did a workshop of that and Dave Barry came to that with Ridley and at the end of it they, they said, wow, none of that's in the novel, who wrote that stuff, it's really good. And I, you know, <laughs> And that's how I got the gig, really purely by accident. And we did the first real production of the play in uh, spring of 2011 at uh, uh, New York Theatre Workshop. And um, amazingly, uh, uh, everybody uh, seemed to like it a lot. And off of that production, we were able to uh, lure producers um, uh, to, uh, to take us to Broadway. But we didn't know, we didn't think we were going to get producers, then we didn't think we were able to raise the money, then we didn't think we were going to get a theater. We started rehearsals on February 20th, and we didn't know until January 20th that it was a go. And um, that's how close to the bone it was. And uh, amazingly, we opened and got reviews, and we got a bunch of, uh, got a whole Nine Tony bunch nominations. Of Tony nominations. Five and wins. And I couldn't be happier because it's been a, such a great passion project for me. And to work with Roger and Alex is a great joy in these particular actors and um, uh, doing, the, uh, doing a production that is this thing. It's not so much what it's about and why it was fun for me to write, connecting the dots between what James Barry wrote in 1904 and what Dave and Ridley wrote in 2004. We, we, we need to be told stories. We need to be interested in stories and we love it. And we're hardwired to love it. And that's what the theater does, and that's what Peter and the Starcatcher revels in. When I was about 40, uh, Roger and I went to see Arcadia, also directed by Trevor Nunn, uh, at Lincoln Center. <laughs> and the next thing I know, we're across the street and Fiorello's having pizza, and mm. there's Tom Stoppard, the guy who wrote it. And, and he said, oh, oh, gee, Wick, you know, because you can't really say the letter R. <laughs> gee, Wick, you seem sort of depressed. And I said, um, well, because I'll never, ever, ever write anything as good as the worst sentence in your play. And he said, oh, Wick, don't you know that there are writers that I feel that way about, too? And I said, yeah, who, like Tolstoy? And he said, well, yes, for one. And I thought, great. You know. He said, who cares if, who cares if, it's, if what you write is good? Just write. Stop being so result-oriented, just write. Mm -hmm. There was something important and true about his advice. And so I took it, and I didn't stop. The little voice inside, or that giant shout inside your head when people are talking to you, and all you can hear is the, your inner voice, and it says, don't stop. Listen to that voice. If you can't hear that voice anymore, then maybe you should stop. If you can't not hear it, then keep going and don't worry about whether it's good or not. So my advice is if you burn, then catch fire and do it. If it's to act, then act in front of the mirror as we've all done. If it's to write, then write and put it in a drawer if you can't get somebody to read it. Look at it the next day, cross it out, do a better version of it. The only difference between me and somebody who's never had anything on Broadway was I happened to be sitting at my desk when the phone rang that's it. You know, I don't delude myself into thinking that I'm great or even particularly good. But I have a facility and I'm fast and I'm a good listener and I'm um, always open to uh, an edit. You know, nothing's written in stone. Let's figure out another way to do it. Try again. Take your head off. Screw it on another way. Look at it through another window. Look at it coming through another door. Those are things that are craft related and you can actually get better at that. So make that your assignment. If, you, if no one's saying, I'm gonna hire you to write a Broadway play, hire yourself to become a better writer. Write a version of something that you love. Write your own version of it. 
and then read them side by side. Figure out how you can be better. Thank you, Rick, so much for your time. This has been a pleasure. It's not over already. Gee, it's just flown <laughs> by. It seems like, seems like only yesterday that you came here. <laughs>